We are about to build a fancy fancy app. Reset, run, shapes, location, color. Shapes, location, color. Isn't it incredible? The answer is yes. So we'll walk through, I'll, I'll walk you through all the steps. There's a bunch of code. It won't be scary. Let's um get started. This is code.org. Let's see what we're doing. Build the locker screen app using your activity guide to help you plan. Students, that you should have picked up yesterday if you're my student. <laughs> when you're done, submit your work. All right. So list of icons to randomly choose between. Cool. And they start us off with some buttons. We can dip in design mode to see what we got going on there. All right. So let's see what they started us out with, right? We have these images, except that they're empty. Let's hit run and see if they gave us anything for them. Nope. And it looks like, though, right, if you remember the example here. I should still have it. Yeah, here. All right. So let's hit run on this. This was their example. And you see how they also start out with images. We have color, sh location, shapes. Let's hit run. Change the color of our smileys. Change their location or what's going on with my shape? There we are. There we go. All right. Change the shape. So boom, boom. Does colors change? Yes, it changes the shape, uh, the color of the item and the color of the background. Cool. Okay. And so that is what we need. All right, so we start off with this list. What else will we need then? Well, let's make sure to assign an item to each of the images when we hit run. So if you notice, they're all numbered. ID, icon zero, icon two, all the way down. So. What can we do with that? Well, we can do a for loop. So I'm going to go into control here and do four, just like we have been doing. I'll go into blocks. I think it's sometimes easier to read in tutorials. So four. Well, I'll do this. OK, so we're going to assign some images to our icon. For i, remember what this does. For i equals zero, i is less than four i plus plus. What this means is starting, we're going to use this variable i, it's going to be equal to zero. i must always be less than four, which is not what we want. i plus plus, each time we go through our loop, add one to i. So how many items do we have here? Hmm, well, it looks like 19. So if we have 19, we want i to be less than 20. And then what are we going to do? Well, we're going to keep i less than 20. And we're going to give each we're going to give each one of these a picture on load. I would just start with the heart. We could also randomize it. That would work as well. Let's go ahead, though, and do the randomization technique, though, because that is what they had on their example. So for that, I'm going to have up here var um, icon index is equal to zero. So I'm just going to have that set equal to zero. But then down here, I'm going to say right above our for loop, icon index is equal to, I want to get a random number. And my random number should be between the possible indexes. Well, I know this starts at zero, right? I mean, yikes, possible indexes of icon list, okay? We're going to get the indexes of icon list because we're going to use this index to choose an image to assign to these guys, okay? So zero to what? One, two, stop counting. Don't do that. We don't need to count. Because what if I add some icons to this? That could mess up this random number. So what I should do instead of counting and put in a number, I should, I know it will always start at zero. And then I should do icon list, like we have been doing, dot length. Um, and it might, they have been having it. Yep, right here. You could also drag this out. Icon list dot length. But make sure to also do we also need to put a minus one after it because the length, when you ask the computer to give you the length of a list or an array of a list, it will do, it will say, okay, one item, two item, three item, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we'll shoot back eight. The problem is we can't use that for an index because we don't have an index eight because the index starts at zero. So my indexes are zero, one, two, three, four, five, six seven. So we need the length, but we can't have it actually go that far because we're starting at the number zero. So we do length minus one because index seven is the last index. All right. For I, uh, yep. 
Now, once we have this, once we pick a random index, we're going to go ahead and set these guys up. So I need UI control. I need set property. And this is like we have been doing. Now, what's the ID? Well, it's going to be icon, the word icon. Okay. And you can also use math plus, right? Because we're going to concatenate. We're going to take a string. Yikes, not that one. We're going to take a string and then we're going to take a, a integer, a number. I'm going to put this in, you must put this in quotes because it's a string icon plus I, because that's this, right? We start at zero. What did they start at? Zero. So we start at icon zero. We go all the way up till 19 because once we equal 20, we are done. It won't run, which is good because guess what? It stops at 19. And what are we going to do with all of those? Well, from icon 0 to 19, we need to image. We're going to set our image. And then what are we going to set it to? We're going to set it to, I got rid of all that. We're going to set it to our icon. You can't have this in quotes. Icon list. And then uh, square brackets, which is up next to the letter P. Not curly brackets, square icon list and then icon index is what I titled it. Remember, I named this icon index. That's why we're using it. What is, oh, icons. I messed that up. Looks like I messed up the S here as well. Okay, that's good. All right, so what should happen now is it will grab an icon from here. We'll get a random, well, here, let's test it. Then I'll explain. Boop. Boom, there we are. So awesome. It's grabbing our uh, random one of these and it's setting up the icon to that icon plus I. So zero to 19, the word icon slap icon two set property, the image property icon list, whatever icon index, whatever random number. Oh, it was the bolt that time or whatever random number popped up. Maybe it was one that random number popped up musical note so everything is the musical note so icon we hit the bottom it goes back it says okay we'll start at zero right icon plus zero sets this one up boom hits the bottom i, I plus plus means i equals i plus one so i is now one we set i one's icon i two and it just keeps looping till we get to 20 and then it's done which is great because we have nine uh, because we have zero through 19. all right so we got that that's just setting us this setting up the starter image now let's go ahead and put that into a function because we're going to want to do that more often. We're going to be randomizing the image when we click shapes. So, and that's what we just did. We randomized the image, which is the shape. So I'm going to grab a function over here. I'm going to drop it here and I'm going to say change shape. And then I'm going to move my comment above this because it makes more sense there. I'm going to put all of this in here. And now I've named that block of code chain shapes. So I still am going to call it at the start of the program. So it sets us up with shapes, change, shapes. Okay. Now, when else would I want this function to be called? And again, a function call is where we say, hey, computer, run chain shapes. And the computer says, what? Mm -hmm. Smack. Oh, it's this, and it runs through it. Where else would I want that to be called? Well, what about when the user or when I click on the shapes button? Oh, look, the idea of it is shapes button. So I'm going to then go, I don't know, I'll put it here. What's the ID shapes button? So when the user on the event that the shapes button is clicked, what do I want to occur? Well, I want to run my function change shapes. And let's see. So run hearts, boom, boom, boom. Sometimes it looks like it doesn't change and that's likely because it, it's the same shape as it was last time. Cool. So there is a way we could prevent that though. I can do a new variable here at change shapes and I'm gonna say last index and that's gonna be equal to my icon index, okay? I'm actually going to start this at negative one then, which doesn't matter because we won't use it when it's negative one. That way I know it's never been changed. So last index is going to be equal to icon 
index. And then we're going to get a new random number icon index. And what I will do after that is I will say, just to make sure it's new. So I will say wall icon index is equal equal to last index. Okay, so if the number we got is equal to last index, I'm demanding that the computer, I'm going to copy this line and paste it right there. So the computer needs to understand that if these are equal, I set last index equals to icon index. So whatever we used to have, I set it. So maybe we had hearts or maybe we had music. So it was it was index of one. So now last index would be equal to one. And then I change icon index. If our random number spit out one again, I'm saying wall icon index is equal to last index. Okay, so is it one again? Oh, it is. These are both one. Okay, here, go into the loop, get another random number icon index hits the bottom. Is it still one? Did you do one again on a random number? No, you got two. Okay, well, then we're done. And it just makes sure it will never be the same. That's a bit more advanced stuff, but it's nice to have finishing touches like that. All right, so now let's go ahead and do a function for locations, uh, which will, well, we actually can do an on event for that, on event. Oops, on event. So what would this be? This will be on a, the event that, and I can't see the full thing, so I'm gonna go into design mode, locations button, that would make sense. On the event that the locations button is clicked, what do I want to have occur? Well, I want to randomize the location of all of the shapes. So to do that, we are going to use a for loop again. So control for, just like we did before, just like we did before, there are 20 icons. I know that now. Okay. And so I will start at zero, which is great because we have an icon of zero and it will go to 20. Now, what do we want to set? Well, let me do set property. What property? We are going to set the icon plus i. So it will be first icon zero, hits the bottom of the loop, goes back to the top, i equals i plus one, icon one, icon two, all the way up to icon 20, which is great. It's all of those. What are we going to change? Well, not the width. We need to change the x and then the x values. Let's see our grid over here. It's about zero to 320. But think about it, if it does it from the top corner, you might not want that full range. So I would set mine to math random. If our icons, I'm going to set mine to let's try 50. And this might not work to 270 ish for x. Now let's set the property for y. And same deal as this one. So icon plus i, i can't be in quotes because i is a variable where icon's not, and we're going to do y, and y is 0 yet to 450. So I'm going to do, and again, I don't want it to go to the edges, same deal as last time, so I'll do 50 to 400 and see what that looks like. All right. Let's go ahead and hit run. Yay, shapes, yay. <laughs> and then locations. Okay, so that's looking all right. It is holding them all in on the side. So if you do wanna free yourself, you could do zero to, I still wanna do 300 because 320 would be totally off. I'm gonna do 300 and I'll do zero to 430, let's see. And keep in mind, we still got to change sizes. There we go. It gives it a bit more range. All right. Now we're going to do the location. Let's take a look at what size. How did they do that? Let's look. So it looks, let me hit run. Do they always change the sizes? Yeah, it looks like the size is randomized. Okay. So. Well, let's go ahead then and where we can do that is on changing. Did they randomize it every time? They didn't. They randomized it. It looks like when they hit locations is when they were messing with sizes. So let's do it like they did then. So when they changed their location, that's when they adjusted their size. So we already did this here. So perfect. We have that set up. 
let's go ahead and do set property, set property, and same idea here. So icon plus I width, um, maybe, I'm not really sure. This is going to be partially what looks good. Random number 30 to 100. And now we want to do height. Oh, if we want to keep them uniform though, hmm. So uh, we might have an issue with this because they could be a different height and width and that could make them look distorted if code.org doesn't auto adjust for it. Let's hit run and see though. Shapes, okay, locations. And remember I put the size inside of location. Oh, well, it looks like they aren't, I was worried if this was equal to 30 for width and height was 100, it'd be all stretched out looking, but it looks like they're adjusting just fine. So that looks a bit small compared to what they were doing in the example. I'm gonna change that to 300 and this to 300. Yeah, I'm liking that more. All right, awesome. So we got that. So location and the we put size there. So now we let's make the colors button work. Uh, and we have changed shapes. So on event, gonna drop this here. So ah, not a function on event on event and we will need a function as well actually so function because we're going to run this when the program starts so function uh change colors and this is going to be similar to what we have been doing control four so four i is equal to zero i needs to be less than 20 again because there's 20 icons starting from zero going to 19 would be 20 and what are we going to do with those we're going to set the property set property and here's the fun part the color so they it's hard to see how they do it what they often do is well here first let me type in icon just like we have been doing like i've been explaining i right so we concatenate it the word the string icon with the number zero one two three and we're going to set the property of icons six seven eight so on and what property do we want to set well we want to set the flat color one let's see Let's see if it will let us use icon color. I'm thinking it might be try text color red. So we need to make sure to call it. I have on event of nothing. So on event of colors. Oh, there we are. Colors button clicked. What do I want to do? I want to make a function call. And this is me asking the computer to run the change color function I just made, which might not work. I'm not sure if it's text color or icon color. So see, this is not going to work. So is it? Oh, it is icon color. Okay, that time icon color worked. So great, we're going to set the property icon plus one in our for loop icon color. Now not just one, right, we need a randomized color. How they usually do this is they do sit in variables, I'm not sure that nope. They do random number for RGB. Yep, right here. Just like this. And I'm not going to use this 0.5. That's, or do they? They do. That is transparency. Interesting. Okay. They did use that. All right. So what I'll do though for these, instead of writing it out here, because you're not going to be able to see it, it's going to get super long. Let me set this. I'm going to have a few variables just in here just to use for the color. So var, 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 and it's just going to be red, green, blue, and then math, random. And remember what we want for RGB is 0 to 255 because that's, think of it almost like pigment, so 0 to 255 red pigment. How much green pigment? Zero to 255 and zero to 255 blue. And I'm just naming these variables red, green, blue to make it more clear. They had all of their icons a little bit transparent, so I don't think they were using a random number on them. I'm gonna stick to 0 0.5 and see how it looks. Ah, not red, red. 
Let's hit reset run. Run. Shapes. Locations. Colors. Oh yeah, see how it, it does look like theirs. Oh, this is so cool. Okay, another thing they did was change their background color. So they must have randomized their background color with the actual colors here. So I would like to do the same. How we could do that is... Um, this will make the background the same color as one of the icons. So... Oh, I know what I'll do. Um, I'm going to do set property within my color change. Set property. And then set the property of home screen. And I think it's background color. It might just be color, but no, it's background. Okay, color. And then just like here, I'm going to use RGB. But instead of doing red, green, blue, I'm going to do green, red, uh, no, green, blue. That way they're all mixed up. Red, 0 0.5. And the reason I'm doing that is to make sure because we're not going to recalculate the, oop, this should be outside of my for loop. We're not going to recalculate red, green, blue after we loop through all the icons, but I want to use these values and I don't want it to be the, the background to be the exact same color as one of the icons. So if I mix them up, then suddenly I'll have however much green pigment I was supposed to have up here, I'll have red pigment because it's in the red place. However much blue pigment I was supposed to have up here, well, now I have it in the green place. So it'll just give me a bit of a different color. <laughs> this is super cool. And so mine tend to be off towards this size, and that's a result of the location stuff I did. So I might lessen that. For me, the Y value could be up to 430. I'm going to put it maybe to... Oh, that won't matter. That Well, that's down. Okay, I'm going to put this to 400, and I'm going to put this to 270. And I might even want to mess with it more, depending on what I am looking for. <laughs> Super fun. All right. So now we just want it to start out like theirs did. And to do that, we're going to call all of our functions because we got it all made, ready to go. So once the person clicks start, we're going to do change shapes. I then need to run or call my uh, change colors function. And then the location function, whoops. So I'm going to need to pull this out of on event and give it its own function so we can use it both in the, at both when we click on it, both when we click on the button, but also when the program starts. I'm going to want to randomize the locations. And remember, we used it to randomize size um, at both those points. And so to do that, we want it in a function because that way it's really easy to reuse code because we just asked the code to, to run by calling its name. So now I can replace that with what I named it, which was change locations, and it will do the exact same thing. And I can automatically ask it to run at the top of the code to make sure when the user starts the program, it looks good. <laughs> I love it ah craziness <laughs> cool shape 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 brah awesome that was fun tricky stuff we are learning real stuff though that's for sure arrays lists iteration uh functions on events click handlers we're doing good all right i hope yours is as cool as mine let's uh yeah let's keep going. Onward!